All right, so check this out. There's another new AI framework that just dropped, and it's solving a huge problem we've all been running into with image generation, resolution limits. This is Dai P from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Dai PE, the project main mission, is dynamic position extrapolation for ultra-high resolution diffusion. Honestly, this matters because it removes one of the biggest bottlenecks in AI art right now. Training native 4K models costs millions and takes weeks. But with Dai PE, you can get near native quality from models you already have today. Whether you're a concept artist needing print-ready renders, a designer mocking up UIs, or just someone who hates blurry AI hands, this is a legit upgrade. And the best part? It's training free. You don't need new GPUs or datasets. Just integrate Dai PE into your existing pipeline and you're good to go. For anyone working with diffusion transformers, this feels like one of those, why didn't we think of this sooner, moments. Seriously, keep an eye on this one. It's low-key revolutionary. Talking about pipeline, Dai PE are available in Comfy UI by using a custom node called Comfy UI Dai PE, therefore by adding a node into your existing Flux image generation workflow. You are able to generate 4K image in one go. Okay, so we're in the Comfy UI Dai PE GitHub repo. Now this repo has the instructions to show you how to implement this in your graph basically highlighting some key features of what this framework does, like integrating with the Flux workflow and your existing workflow. With it, you can generate images up to 4K resolution within just one sampler. So simply place this note. We'll be searching for Dai PE for Flux as the name of the node and connect that with your existing workflow. Now there's something you've got to be aware of when implementing this. The resolution is way bigger, way larger, than what we usually generate in Flux. I'll show you what I mean. Go to the Comfy UI Manager, type in the custom node's name, and click Install. Make sure this is the correct name you're selecting. Once you install it and restart Comfy UI, which only takes a few seconds, you'll be back on the Comfy UI screen, ready to start with a very basic workflow first. Just to see how to implement it the simple way, you can use the templates in Comfy UI and choose the Flux DEV workflow. When you type Flux in the Browse Templates section and scroll down, you'll see this workflow template. Go ahead and start playing around with it. Basically, you'll need to select your existing Flux AI model files and make sure the VAE and the dual clip loader are set up correctly. I'm going to run a quick test first to make sure the basic Flux setup is working properly. Okay, so we got an image generated from this browse template using a text prompt, something like fantasy girl with elf-like features, thorns, and it looks pretty nice. As you can see, the resolution is 1024 pixels, which is a pretty standard size and setting for Flux. Now we're going to add this DIPE for Flux custom node here. Let's move some things around on the side to make room for the new node. You'll see a purple dot here, that's the model data pipeline. We're going to connect that between the loaded diffusion model and the K sampler. I'm going to change this color to yellow so it pops visually. Now, for these settings here, the thing you've got to watch out for is the width and height. If you check the GitHub repo, it shows you exactly how to implement it, what nodes to input and all that. There's also a warning that the width and height inputs are kind of buggy in the current version. So for now, just keep those set to 1024 by 1024 in the Dai PE node. That's fine. All we really need to do is change our empty latent node. I put a note here just to remind myself of the 4K resolution size. And let's test it again. At this point in the workflow, I haven't added any extra nodes, no sage attention, no torch compile, none of those speed up tricks. I'm just running a pure flux workflow integrated with Dai PE. It's going to take about 1 minute and 31 seconds on my machine to generate this 4K resolution image. And as you can see, the image looks nice, even when I zoom in close. All the items, all the elements in this image are super sharp. The character's hair, wings, and dress all look detailed. So how can we speed up the processing time? Well, I've tested this before. 
you can actually add a LoRa to lower the sampling steps while still maintaining decent quality. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add Sage Attention. If you check the Usage section in the GitHub repo, it says you can plug model patches, like Sage Attention, right into the DIPE node connections, just like in their demo screenshot. So, we'll connect the purple dot after the DIPE node to Sage Attention, and also add another patch for FP16 accumulations. Then we'll chain all these model pipeline nodes together, just like in the example screenshot from the GitHub repo. Don't forget to enable FP16 accumulations too. Another method I've tried is using a LoRa. I'm connecting a Flux LoRa here. Specifically, I'm using the Flux Turbo Alpha LoRa to lower the sampling steps. I've set the sampling steps to 6. Let's see how that turns out. Yep, it works. The image is still 4K resolution and the quality hasn't dropped too much. Sure, the hair looks a little different than in the previous version, even though it's the exact same text prompt and everything, but that's expected when you lower the sampling steps. It'll affect some of the finer details. So I'm also going to add another LoRa, the SRPO. We talked about this before. It's a fine-tuned model from Tencent that produces fewer artifacts and gives a more aesthetic look. They actually offer it as a full base diffusion model, but right now they also have a LoRa version, which makes it easier to plug into your existing Flux base model in a modular way. This time, I'm going to change the text prompt to something more realistic in style. Let's give that a try. We've got SRPO and Flux Turbo Alpha both connected to the Flux base model, and we've generated a sniper image. It looks pretty nice. Think about it. Just six sampling steps, one sampler, and you're getting this level of detail. Look at the ghillie suit. All those leaves attached to it are rendered leaf by leaf. That's the kind of detail you'd normally expect from a full Flux generation with many more sampling steps. The only issue is the rifle and the gloves. They're a bit off, but everything else, the leaves, the trees, the background, is super crisp. It really feels like a high-quality flux output. The hands and rifle looking a little awkward is probably because those specific items might need a specialized LoRa trained just for rifles or military gear. But overall, it's totally fine for now. Based on this flux setup, I'm going to try a more advanced workflow using Flux and the DIPE framework. Let's see how that turns out. Okay, so after playing around with this framework and Flux, I recreated one of my older workflows. This one used Flux SRPO and connected multiple samplers, then went into WAN 2.2. Actually, that label should probably be changed. Anyway, and then it went into an upscaler refiner. But here's the thing I realized. When you plug DIPE into an existing multi-sampler workflow, it doesn't work super well. Once you're already generating at 4K resolution, passing that through another upscaler or a second or third sampler like WAN 2.2 or the Ultimate SD upscaler just becomes painfully slow. You're already at 4K, and pushing it even higher isn't efficient or practical for normal image generation. Sure, you can generate massive images if you've got all day and unlimited GPU power, but realistically, 4K is more than enough for most image or video content needs. So, I trimmed the workflow down like this. Honestly, you really only need two samplers, and sometimes you might not even need that second pass. Because once you're generating at 4K with DIPE integrated into Flux, the first K sampler pass is already incredibly detailed. There's not much left to refine. I've tested this framework pretty thoroughly with Flux, and the first pass is already delivering sharp, high res 4K output. So why waste time resampling the same image over and over? You're better off generating a new, better image instead. For the purpose of this tutorial, if you're using Comfy UI to generate 4K images, Here's what I'd suggest. Let the first K sampler generate at 2K resolution. I've added a note here to mark the 4K and 2K sizes for reference. Then, pass that through an image upscale node, say 
1.5x upscale. So you end up with a 4K image on the second pass, plus a little extra denoising to enhance details. But remember, the very first simple workflow we tried, where we just added the die PE for Flux node, is already capable of generating 4K in a single pass. So you can actually rethink your whole approach to image generation with this framework. Back to this example, if you're already running at 4K, trying to upscale further or run VAE encode decode steps just eats up a ton of time. Instead, if your first K sampler is already outputting 4K, I'd recommend connecting the latent output directly to a second K sampler and skipping the VAE encode steps entirely. That'll save you a lot of time, especially if you're on a consumer grade GPU. Speaking of resolution, here's something important to watch out for. When you're using 4K, make sure the DIPE exponent setting is set to 2. If you're using 2K or 3K, set it to 1. If you mismatch these, like setting width and height to 4K but leaving the explosion's value at 1, you'll get weird results. The proportions of your character or objects might look totally off. So, just be careful with that. Personally, I think the setup I've got here works better. I don't really think you need VAE encode decode at all. If your first sampler is already giving you 4K, you probably don't even need the ultimate SD upscaler, especially not the old multi-sampler workflows I used to run with WAN 2.2 or SD upscaling to 4K. This new approach is way simpler. Now, some people might say they don't like Flux because of artifacts or the plastic skin look, but honestly, there are tons of LoRa models now that fix exactly that. Models like SRPO from Tencent or other realism-focused or artifact-reducing LoRas can dramatically improve the base model's output. And don't forget, you can also use Quen 3 VL for image-to-prompt stuff. Actually, I've got some images here. Let's try a different text prompt this time. We'll run this once and see how it looks. And I'll change the file path. Hopefully, we'll get a good result. All right, so here's an image generated from a prompt. Then run through QN3VL to get a new prompt from the image. The result isn't amazing, but I've gotten better ones before using the same setup. Still, as a demo, it shows the point. From the first sampler to the second pass, we're pulling latent image data straight into the case sampler, which is way faster than going through VAE encode decode. I also added a denoise value of 0.35, which gives a slight overall enhancement to the image. Here's a close up. You can see the shoulders and skin texture got a little boost. So that's one way to generate large 4K images. And you definitely don't need the ultimate SD upscaler like we used to with regular Flux or Quen. This new method is simpler and more efficient. And sure, some folks still complain about Flux's base model artifacts, but that's kind of naive. Even back in the SD 1.5 days, the base model looked rough. It was only after tons of fine-tuning custom checkpoints and community-trained models that things got 100% better. The same idea applies to Flux and Quen Image. Yeah, the base models might give you plastic-looking skin or weird artifacts, but that's why we have LoRa's. You can refine the output, boost aesthetics, reduce artifacts, and even add specialized details. So far, it's looking pretty nice, really promising, with the DIPE framework integrated into Flux. I think I'll stick with Flux for a little while and keep playing around with this setup. Have a nice day. See ya.